This video will review the steps for a perineal mucosal sleeve resection with primary anastomosis, also known as the DeLorme procedure. Our patient is an elderly female who was referred to our clinic for a full thickness rectal prolapse, extending approximately 5 centimeters. This was associated with pain, intermittent spotting, constipation, and fecal incontinence. She has a history of well-controlled hypertension and diabetes type 2, open cholecystectomy via a midline laparotomy, and five vaginal births. Indication for surgery was a symptomatic full thickness rectal prolapse. A perineal approach was chosen due to the patient's age and frailty. One of the benefits of performing a DeLorme in this elderly patient is that if there is a post-operative anastomotic leak, it is not an intra-abdominal leak when compared to an Altemeyer. Contraindications of the DeLorme procedure include patients with a previous history of abdominal rectopexy and bowel resection due to opposing blood supplies. Rectal prolapses greater than 5 cm may be more challenging in a DeLorme procedure. Current ASCRS guidelines suggest that the Altemeyer may be the preferred approach in these scenarios. Spinal anesthesia may be used if the patient has contraindications to general anesthesia. Foley catheterization is at the discretion of the surgeon, but should be considered in the setting of spinal anesthesia. Key steps of the DeLorme procedure include appropriate patient positioning followed by prolapse of the rectum. A circumferential partial thickness incision which will include the mucosal and submucosal layers, will be made cranial to the dentate line. The mucosal and submucosal layers will be circumferentially dissected off the muscularis propria until the extent of the rectal prolapse is delivered through the anal canal. This will be followed by circumferential plication of the muscularis propria. The mucosal sleeve will then be resected. Finally, a mucosal to mucosal rectal anastomosis will be performed. The patient is secured to the operating table in the prone jackknife position. The surgical field is prepped in the usual sterile fashion using betadine, similar to that of a hemorrhoidectomy. Gentle traction is applied to the rectum so that it is prolapsed through the anal canal. In this patient, the rectum was already prolapsed at the time of operation. The rectal mucosa is marked about 1.5 cm cranial to the dentate line circumferentially. Local anesthesia is not required in the DeLorme, as significant pain is unlikely due to the anastomosis being superior to the dentate line. If the surgeons choose to use local anesthesia, this may be used for hydrodissection of the submucosal plane, in addition to minimizing blood loss if epinephrine is included. Starting posteriorly, electrocautery is used to make a circumferential incision through the mucosa and submucosa. Precise dissection through these two layers is performed, taking care to avoid a full thickness dissection. Using absorbable suture, stay sutures are placed through the mucosa in the four cardinal directions, which will later be used for the mucosal to mucosal anastomosis. Circumferential dissection along the length of the prolapse is continued, elevating the submucosa off the underlying muscularis propria. One potential pitfall is inadvertent full thickness dissection. Slow, careful dissection under tension is crucial to avoid injury to the submucosa. It is prudent to continually reassess the plane of dissection to ensure that one remains in the submucosal plane. If a small full thickness injury occurs, the surgeons can primarily repair the injury and continue forth with the DeLorme. If a large full thickness defect occurs and or the surgeons struggle to find the appropriate plane, then the operation may be converted to an Altemeyer. Another potential pitfall is not dissecting out the entire length of the prolapse. The extent of this dissection is determined by placing gentle traction on the rectum until the entire prolapse is delivered through the anal canal and tension is noted. In total, approximately 7 centimeters of mucosal sleeve was dissected off the muscularis propria in this patient. Next, plication of the muscular layer is performed. 
Several absorbable sutures are placed circumferentially in a longitudinal fashion, beginning at the outer edge of the muscle and ending at the junction of the dissection. Care is taken to ensure that the muscular layer is invaginated. Once muscular plication is completed, a rectotomy is made through the mucosal sleeve at the posterior apex. Using the absorbable stay suture that was previously placed in the posterior aspect of the outer edge of the mucosa, the hand-sewn mucosal-to-mucosal anastomosis is begun. The rectotomy is extended and the anastomosis is continued in the other cardinal directions. When only the anterior apex is left, the mucosal sleeve is amputated and passed off the field as specimen. The anterior apex of the anastomosis is then completed and tied down. Two to three additional absorbable sutures are placed in each of the four quadrants. The anastomosis is completed when sutures are placed circumferentially around the anal canal. Once all stay sutures are cut, the anastomosis is carefully inspected, which appears intact with good perfusion. This is then easily reduced into the proper anatomical position. Here is a figure by ASCRS that depicts the DeLorme procedure, including muscular plication in figures C and D. Here is the mucosal sleeve specimen. This patient was elderly with comorbidities, so the surgeons elected for overnight observation. Same-day discharge can be considered if the surgery was uneventful and the patient is healthy. The patient had an uneventful recovery and was discharged home on post-op day one.